My name is Rachel, and on behalf of New York BioForce, I'm going to go over making a basic buffer solution. We're going to make uh, TBS, or Tris Buffered Saline, today, and we're making a 10x concentration of this. So I know from my protocol that I'm going to need three ingredients, Tris, or Triasma base, NaCl, or sodium chloride, and then distilled water. So I have my labeled liquid here. This is distilled water, and because it's clear liquid in the lab, in an open container, I make sure that I have a label with its name, my initial kind of dates. So we're gonna end up making half a liter, or 500 mils of this liquid. Um, but when you're making a buffer, or any liquid where you're adding a weighted um, a powdered solution, you never wanna start with the final volume, because you're gonna end up adding a little bit of water as your salts react in the water. So I have a clean beaker here. So I'm gonna start by filling it to about half of the volume that I think I'll need at the end. So I'm gonna pour in about 250 to 300 mils. And now I need to measure out my tris base and my sodium chloride and add this here. So here is our scale that we're gonna measure. Um, the first thing I always do when I come up to one of these is check to make sure that it's actually balanced. So all skills in some location will have a level on them, and this one happens to be on the back. You want to make sure that the bubble is centered in the circle, and then you know your scale is balanced. And if it's not, I can adjust it. There we go. And you can see the adjustment on these scales is usually two feet that move. So moving them forward or back will adjust the location of that bubble. So once I'm confident that my scale is balanced, I'm going to put a weigh boat. Because I'm measuring a bigger volume, I'm gonna actually use a boat. And I place that on. And the first thing I wanna do is tear, or zero, my scale. Because we're doing a very big volume, we're doing um, 30.5 grams of our tris base and 45 grams of our sodium chloride. As long as I'm accurate to even a tenth, it's fine. If I was measuring a very small volume, like uh, five milligrams, for example, then I would need to be very careful that I kept this completely zeroed. And to do that, I would need to make sure that I'm keeping my doors closed so that air isn't disturbing the tearing of this instrument. So because this is a large volume, I'm going to start by pouring a fair amount. And as you get more experience, you get a sense of how much you can pour. So I pour until I get close to what I need. So I need 30.5 grams. And because I have experience, that's very, very close. And then you use a scooper, sometimes they're metal, sometimes they're plastic, to either add or take off till I get to the close amount. So I'm just going to scoop a small volume and add it bit by bit. So that's actually taken me just over, so I'm going to remove a little bit until I get 30.5. There we go. So 30.55. Again, being accurate for a larger volume within one-tenth is fine. So I make sure I close up my liquid so I don't spill. I carefully remove my weigh boats. And then I'm going to pour this into my solution. And to start this dissolving, I take a magnetic stir bar. I want to pick a size that fills up most of the bottom space. If it's too small, it won't spin. I drop that in. I put that on my magnetic stir plate and then I turn that on. And I want to turn this to a speed where I get a small tornado in the water. But if I turn it too high, it will start to splash. So that should be good. So I'll leave that stirring. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So I'll leave that stirring while I measure my next solution. 
So now, moving on to the NACL, I take a clean wave boat, again place it on my scale, and I'll hit tear again. And this time I want 45 grams of NACL. This is kind of a big container, so we'll see if I can pour carefully into here. No, I can't. So what I'm going to do is remove the boat, but not hit tear again. And I'm going to pour outside. And again, you get used to about how much different things weigh when you're making the solution a lot. So let's see where that takes us. Pretty close, 41.8. So now I'm going to take a clean scooper and I'm going to add until I get to 45. There we go. And then when if I go a little over, I can remove some. There we go, 45.09. So I would note that in my notebook. And then I take the NACL and I pour this into a solution. Just mixing nicely. I'm just going to take that down a little bit. And it's good practice to always close your chemicals as soon as you're done using them so you don't accidentally knock them over. Now I'm just waiting until the solution goes clear and my salts have fully dissolved. And then I'll take the final volume up to 500 mils. And while I'm waiting, I can show you when you're measuring smaller volumes, volumes that are just a couple of grams or even less, you can use these weigh papers. They're a little less cumbersome than those boats. And a trick for this is to fold the paper in half both directions. So you end up with a little uh, like well to hold your liquid, or sorry, your powder. Then you would tear your instrument. And then let's say I wanted to do 1.5 grams of salt. And I can add a smaller volume into that point in the paper. So I don't need a whole boat for this. Almost there. Then I immediately put my lid on and screw that tight. And then you can carefully remove this paper without spilling your liquid. And then you have a way to pour it into your solution easily. So our liquid looks nice and clear. So I'm going to turn this off. And uh, I'm going to pour my liquid into a graduated cylinder. So I know I want 500 mils in the end. You want to pick a graduated cylinder that's the smallest cylinder you can use, but still hold all of your volume. So I wouldn't want to use a 1,000 mil cylinder to measure out 100 mils of liquid. In this case, I have this nice 500 mil cylinder, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to carefully pour my solution in. So I don't lose any. And you always want to measure final volumes in a graduated cylinder. That's your most accurate tool for measuring large volumes in a lab. 
Um, you'll often see marks for volume on beakers, you'll see them on bottles, you'll see them on tubes. These aren't accurate for these types of measurements. These are graduations are good for ballpark. So you can look at what's in a jar and say, for example, oh, I have about 500 mils left, and you know, uh, but you would never actually measure a final volume in that jar. So now I'm gonna take, um, I have a large volume of water, and I'm gonna pour it into my graduated cylinder, and I'm gonna take this up to 500 mils, and I'm pouring so that if I get down at eye level, the water forms a slight U shape, and the bottom of that U should be at 500. So that's my 500 mils. So um, you can always fill extra volume in a jar, and um, that leftover water is fine. And you may be able to tell that it's a little bit foggy, this liquid, and that makes sense because this is a 10x salt solution. Um, so it's very, very strong, and we would dilute it before we used it. So now I have 500 mils of my 10x solution. I can pour it into my storage jar. And the trick with these graduated cylinders is to pour slow so you don't overflow and spill as you're pouring. Put that lid on and then most importantly, we don't want any unlabeled liquids in our lab. So you always want to put what's in the bottle, its concentration is relevant, your initials, so if there's any questions about who made it or how it was made, people know how to ask, and the date it was made, so it can be determined if it's expired, if it's sitting on a bench. So I'm going to write Tris Buffer Sailing on this. 10X, my initials are LS, and the date 5, 12, 18. And there is our 10X TBS.